Hello everyone, welcome back to Lasers Woodshop. Today I'm going to make a display cabinet from 3 quarter inch solid oak. And the back, the bottom two layers, the top, and the shelves are going to be made from plywood. But all those edges are going to be covered by solid wood, so uh, I'm not worried about those. It's going to be finished with an antique brown stain, uh, so it'll have one coat of shellac and three coats of lacquer. All right, let's get right into it. First thing I'll do is mill the lumber down to three quarters of an inch. It comes from the lumber yard at uh, about 13 sixteenths, and that extra thickness is just going to throw off all my measurements, so I'm going to have to take off that extra sixteenth of an inch. Next I'll cut down the bottom center piece to a decorative shape. I'm going to leave this a little bit long because I'm going to have to cut it to fit later anyway. Next I'm going to work on the bottom base piece. This is two pieces that are 48 by 11 and a half and I'm just going to glue them together. Uh, first I'm going to make sure the edges are flush and then I'm going to clamp them. Then I'm going to drill some pilot holes, but I'm going to make sure that uh, these pilot holes are not going to go all the way through both pieces. And then I'm going to countersink all those holes, and then uh, I'm going to glue. I'm going to use inch and a quarter screws to hold these together uh, to act as, act as clamps. This is going to be the underside of the cabinet, so these screws aren't going to be seen by anybody anyway. I'm going to sand the edges of this piece here, and I'll start work on the feet. I'm going to line up the edges here and make sure that the three quarter inch side is not going to overhang because that's just going to look weird. I'll make some pencil marks and drill some pilot holes and I'm going to glue and screw these to make them extra stable. Line up the pencil marks and screw them down. That's simple as that. Now I can flip this over and I'll work on the two nailers. These two nailers are going to be glued and screwed to the underside of the base here. <laughs> Math is fun. I can't tell if my wife is dancing or if the dog is dancing. Okay, in this next bit I'm going to set the dado blade to three quarter inch wide and a quarter inch high. Check out my video on setting your dado blade height for more info on this. Uh, it's a little video, just a short clip, but it uh, shows you how I set up the dado blade height. I'm going to add an auxiliary fence. I'm going to add a feather board for a more consistent cut. And this cut is a little bit awkward to make by yourself, but it is possible. Uh, it is actually best to have a helper in this situation, though.
I'm going to make the rabbits on the back two legs without changing the saw setup. Then I'm going to do some test fits here to make sure that the depth is right. And it wasn't quite right, obviously, so I had to cut these again. And then I'm going to test them again, and after all these are complete, then I can just set the back and these two legs aside for a little bit. Now I can start the dados on the shelf supports. Since this is a display cabinet, there, there might be some small objects on the shelves, and I don't want them to roll off or anything like that, so I made a half inch lip on each shelf support. To make that cut, I moved the fence a half an inch from the rightmost dado blade, and then make the cut. Next I'll make the dados on the legs. So set the fence at the appropriate distance according to the SketchUp drawing and then I'll make the same cut on four of the legs. After that I'll move the fence to the next distance and make four more cuts. And then I'll just keep doing this until I reach about halfway of that particular leg or those particular four legs and then I'm going to flip them around and follow the same steps. Now that the glue is dry on the base, I'm going to glue and nail on uh, the back piece. And I'm going to glue and nail on the bottom shelf support. This shelf support is not really supporting anything, it's only there to match the other shelf supports. Now I'll set up the router table with the chamfer bit and make the decorative detail on the side pieces. I'm just following the plan to make the cuts. After that I'll make some marks for some biscuits. I'm going to sand everything. Uh, gluing these is not tricky but clamping them is use enough pressure to hold them together but not too much pressure to bow the assembly. After a night of rest I'm going to start the flutes on the legs. I'm going to use a piece of tape where I want to start and stop the cut. I'm going to make some test cuts and then I'll cut the outer two flutes first. make some more test cuts and do the center flute. This is what it may, might look like in the end. If the beginning and the ending of each flute are not consistent, use a curved chisel and some sandpaper to clean that up. After all the flutes are done, I'm going to cut a 45 degree bevel on each leg. Now be careful on this step because some legs have flutes and some don't. The top flutes start at a different distance than the bottom flutes. You don't want to cut a bevel on the wrong side of a leg. Just take your time and, and consult the plan. Then organize the pieces, keep them together and mark them with tape. Then make the cuts. When these are done, grab two of the legs with dados and a glued up side assembly. Use a scrap piece to line up the dados and make the marks for some biscuits. But don't glue these yet.
make some squares from scrap and I'm going to use these and some rubber bands and nails to help glue the beveled legs. After the glue is dry on each leg, grab a front and a back leg, match them up with the side assembly that you marked for biscuits. Now you can glue and clamp the three piece assembly. Now I'll cut the pieces for the doors. I'll use some pocket holes to assemble because we all love pocket holes. I'm going to cut two rabbits on the middle door rail using a straight bit in the router table. These rabbits are going to accept the glass a little bit later. I'm going to cut stopped rabbits along each door style, leaving a uh, section in the middle, top, and the bottom. This is where the rails will be attached. I'm going to change the bit to a quarter inch round over and I'm going to make some glass stop. Use an oversized piece of wood to make this glass stop and then I'm going to cut the small piece free over on the table saw. And these pieces are small but using glue and pin nails this small pieces will stop the glass from falling out of the opening. Now all that's left is some staining and assembly. First, I'll attach the left side assembly to the base. Second, attach the back to the left side and the base. Next, attach the right side to the back and the base. And then the top piece ties all these together. Attach the crown molding, which should probably be a whole separate video. And then after that, everything gets a coat of shellac. After that, three coats of lacquer. And then I'm going to attach the doors and deliver to the customer. Now this is a really heavy piece, so you'll need a helper, unless you're Superman. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting videos of all my projects.